So if you're a regular listener, you probably know I love animals, especially dogs. And thusly, I felt somewhat torn over whether or not to even cover this particular subject. But as you're probably also aware, I love strange historical topics. So I figured, why not? Let's do it. So the Supplicia canum, I've also heard it pronounced Supplicia, which sounds more like a modern Italian pronunciation, and I think it depends on the kind of Latin you're going with, but as far as I can tell, in classical Latin, the C should always be pronounced with a hard sound, so I'm going with Supplicia canum. And it means punishment of the dogs, or execution, or executions, plural, of the dogs. And it was an annual sacrificial event in ancient Rome, during which live dogs were crucified or suspended. From a cross, or furca, Latin for fork, a kind of wooden instrument of punishment. And they would then be paraded along a processional route. And crucifixion can mean either nailing or tying the victim to the cross or implement in question. For the sake of the dogs, I hope it was the latter. I wasn't able to find a clear answer. While dogs were suffering en masse, another creature fared much better. Geese, as strange as it might sound, were lavished with honor. They were decked out in purple and gold and carried about on litters. The story behind this strange custom tells of how during the Gallic siege of Rome in the 4th century BCE, the Gauls launched a nocturnal stealth attack against the Roman citadel, sometimes referred to as the Arx Capitolina, a fortified area on the northern spur of the Capitoline Hill. The guard dogs failed to bark, and it was the temple geese instead that became excited and noisily alerted the Romans to the presence of the invaders. In commemoration of their failure to warn the city of the invasion, dogs were ritually punished each year, while geese were celebrated. And I have to admit that when I first began researching this topic for the show, the idea that it was geese who had supposedly saved the day struck me as somewhat absurd. But apparently they actually make excellent guard animals. They're watchful and possess keen eyesight and can be highly aggressive and territorial and will alert humans with their loud honking when they're alarmed by strangers or unusual phenomena. Roman author Pliny the Elder in the Natural History writes, The vigilant guard of the goose is also well attested by the defense of the capital. At that time when the commonwealth had been betrayed by the silence of the dogs, for which reason the censors attend first of all to the feeding of the geese. And then also from Pliny, we have already spoken of the honor paid to the geese, which they earned by detecting the Gauls in their attempt to scale the capital. For the same reason, punishments are yearly inflicted upon the dogs by crucifying them alive upon a fork of elderwood between the temple of Juventus and that of Simonis. And then Plutarch writes, And waiting till the very dead of night, they made the ascent unnoticed, not only by the sentinels but also by the dogs, which shared guard duty and formed the outpost, but then were overcome by sleep. Rome's fortune, however, did not lack a voice capable of revealing and declaring such a great mischance. Sacred geese were kept near the temple of Juno for the service of the goddess. Now by nature this bird is easily disturbed and frightened by noise, and at this time, since they were neglected because dire want oppressed the garrison, their sleep was light and was made uncomfortable by hunger, with the result that they were at once aware of the enemy as they showed themselves above the edge of the cliff. The geese hissed at them, and rushed at them impetuously, and at the sight of arms became even more excited, and filled the place with their piercing and discordant clamor. By this the Romans were aroused, and when they comprehended what had happened, they forced back their enemies and hurled them over the precipice. And even to this day, in memory of these events, there are born in solemn procession, a dog impaled on a stake, but a goose perched in state upon a costly coverlet in a litter. So as disturbing as the idea may be, according to Plutarch, the dogs were actually impaled. And just for context, both Pliny and Plutarch 
were active during the first century of the Common Era, so roughly four centuries after the Gallic Siege of Rome, which is said to have occurred around 387 or 390 BCE, but apparently as indicated by Plutarch, the Suplicia Canum was still an ongoing custom at the time of his writing. And so Pliny mentions the dogs being crucified upon a fork of elderwood. Apparently, stakes made from dead or barren trees, arbor and felix, unproductive tree or tree of ill fortune, were used for punishment. Such trees were considered under the guardianship of the gods of the underworld, and included trees and shrubs that bear black fruit or berries, such as the aforementioned elder. The Suplicia doesn't appear on any extant calendars, but according to a later Byzantine source, the writer John the Lydian or John Lydus, it took place on the 3rd of August. This August 3rd date may be at odds with the traditional chronology of the Gallic Siege of Rome, which has the Gauls setting fire to the city on the 19th of July, and the siege then lasting through February. As mentioned by Pliny, the procession route involved the Temple of Juventus, the goddess of youth and rejuvenation, and that of Sumanus, a Chthonic god associated with nocturnal thunder, counterposed to Jupiter, the king of the gods in the Roman pantheon, who was alternately associated with diurnal thunder. I wasn't able to vet the claim, but I also came across the suggestion that the Seplicia may have taken place in the Circus Maximus, or that the procession was thought to have possibly ended in the Circus Maximus. There's a theory that the siege-starved dogs may have failed to bark because the Gauls distracted them with food. The following is from 3rd century Roman writer and teacher Aelian, or Aelian, I believe, in classical Latin. The A-E being pronounced I, as in the Latin word chylum, meaning sky or heaven. But here it is. Dogs are less useful at keeping watch than geese, as the Romans discovered. At any rate, the Celts, and of course the Gauls were Celtic people from the area that is modern-day France, or roughly in that territory, but anyway, to continue, were at war with them, and had thrust them back with overwhelming force, and were in the city itself. Indeed, they had captured Rome, except for the hill of the capital, for that was not easy for them to scale. For all the spots which seemed open to assault by stratagem had been prepared for defense. It was the time at which Marcus Manlius, the consul, was guarding the aforesaid height, as entrusted to him. It was he, you remember, who garlanded his son for his gallant conduct, but put him to death for deserting his post. But when the Celts observed that this place was inaccessible to them on every side, they decided to wait for the dead of night and then fall upon the Romans when fast asleep. And they had hoped to scale the rock where it was unguarded and unprotected, since the Romans were confident that the Gauls would not attack from that quarter. And as a result, Manlius himself and the citadel of Jupiter would have been captured with the utmost ignominy, had not some geese chanced to be there, for dogs fall silent when food is thrown to them. But it is a peculiarity of geese to cackle and make a din when things are thrown to them to eat. And so with their cries they rouse Manlius and the guards sleeping around him. This is the reason why up to the present day, dogs at Rome annually pay the penalty of death in memory of their ancient treachery. But on stated days a goose is honored by being borne along on a litter in great state. Aelian mentions Manlius, Marcus Manlius Capitolinus. I've also heard it pronounced Manlius, which sounds a bit too on the nose, almost like a joke or a He-Man character, so I guess I'll go with Manlius. But he was thought to have been a custos or guard of the citadel. It's also thought that he may have been in charge of the Juventus or Juventus, a collective of young warriors, and I know I'm kind of being inconsistent here, because technically in classical Latin, I believe the V should be pronounced as a W, 
So as ridiculous as it might sound to our modern ears, Julius Caesar's proclamation, I came, I saw, I conquered, Veni Vidi Vici, should actually be Weni Weedy Weeki. Yeah, it sounds kind of ridiculous, but I'm going to be going with uh, the V sound, you know? Call it arbitrary. According to some accounts, he, meaning Manlius, led the way in response to the alarm raised by the geese, warding off the first Gaul to reach the top of the Capitoline Cliff. Some other accounts have him driving the Gauls from the Temple of Jupiter, which they had entered via tunnels. Manlius later tried to capitalize on his heroic reputation, attempting to establish himself as Tyrannos or king. An absolute ruler was antithetical to the spirit of the Republic. Manlius was accused of treason, and according to at least one account, was sentenced to be beaten to death in a manner that was known as supplicium de more maiorum, punishment or execution in the manner of the ancestors. Whereas crucifixion was reserved for slaves during the Republican era, Supplicia de More Maiorum was reserved for offenses such as treason or sexually violating the purity of one of the Vestals, virginal priestesses of Vesta, the virgin goddess of Rome's sacred hearth and its flame. Although the Supplicia Canum seems to have shared certain elements of the Supplicia de More Maiorum, or traditional punishment or scourging at the stake, it's not thought that the crucified dogs were actually beaten at any point. Thank the gods, I guess, for small mercies. The Gallic Siege of Rome was the only sack of the city during the Republican era, and there's a theory that the Romans may have tried to lessen the embarrassment of this military disaster by wrapping it in legend, with the dogs functioning as a kind of collective scapegoat. The aforementioned John the Lydian offers some alternative explanations for why the dogs may have originally been sacrificed, saying in quotes, Others say that they used to do this so that the dogs would not be troublesome to those who were ill at night. And others say they did this so that rabid dogs would not harm people, for at that time of year rises Sirius, which appears to cause rabies in them. And this strange idea that the rising of the star Sirius causes rabies in dogs is echoed by Pliny, who writes, There is no doubt that dogs throughout the whole of that period are specially liable to rabies. There was another Roman observance associated with the dog star Sirius. It was called the Augurium Canarium, or Dog Augury. It was a movable feast that was held in conjunction with the rising of Sirius. There were other ancient Roman festivals held in August following the Supplicia Canum, such as Vulcanalia, an agricultural festival held on August 23rd at the end of the harvest season, in honor of the god Vulcan, who was associated with the primeval element or force of fire, and was the Roman counterpart of the Greek Hephaestus. The place or status of dogs in the ancient Roman world seems to have been somewhat mixed. Like us, the ancient Romans kept dogs, and although often they were probably considered little more than work animals used for hunting or guarding livestock or property, etc., it does seem that, at least in some cases, like us, they also considered them to be cherished pets. Dogs were even seen as companions of the Laris or Lares, household deities or ancestral spirits who protected hearth and home. But at the same time, they were considered unclean in a sense, to the point where the high priest of Jupiter was not even permitted to touch or speak of a dog. If the Supplicia Canum wasn't bad enough, there was also a market for the body parts of dogs, which were seen as possessing numerous magical or medicinal properties by both the Greeks and Romans. And the Supplicia Canum wasn't the only time of year that the Romans sacrificed dogs. There was also, for example, the Spring Festival of Robigalia. The dog sacrifice was the main aspect of the festival, and it was intended to ward off crop disease or crop failure. 
Apparently, there is no mention of how the sacrificed dogs were disposed of after the Supplicia Canum was over. The meat of sacrificed animals, which were part of the Roman diet, was usually consumed as part of a communal meal. But animals which were considered inedible or unfit for consumption, such as dogs, were usually consumed in a, and forgive the loaded term, holocaust, which in this context means an animal sacrifice in which the remains of the animal are completely consumed by fire and offered up to the gods, usually gods whose sphere of influence is the cycle of birth and death such as the goddess Hecate or the more obscure Mana Genita. But I think with that I'll bring this episode to a close. So go cuddle your canine companion and give them an extra scratch behind the ears. Alright, until next time, and as always, thanks for listening.